welcome to Whiskey and Watches with Nick, where we talk about, wait for it, whiskey and watches, you know, the important things in life. Tonight, for my initial review, whiskey review number one, I'll be reviewing Buna Haven 12. No particular reason, I've just had it on hand. I've been enjoying it for the last few nights. I'm down <clears throat> somewhat past the shoulders already. So I thought it was a logical place to start my reviews. Uh, this is Whiskey and Watches with Nick, so we are going to begin every episode with a customary wrist check. Tonight I am wearing my Christopher Ward C60 Elite, which I love deeply and which I will be reviewing shortly. But for now, on to the whiskey. Uh, for those of you who don't know Buna Haven, it is one of the Isla distilleries. It's located on the northeast coast of the island, just a, I don't know, a couple miles north uh, from Port Askeg. Don't call the Gaelic police on me, please. I'm trying. Um, it kind of stands out from the crowd in Isla because it's not peated. I mean, at all. <laughs> um, some of you might beg to differ, but um, I've been on a steady diet of Lafroig, Ardbeg, and Lagavulin. This, uh, so far since last fall, believe me, this is not peated, not smoked. Um, as such, it might make a really interesting entree to the Isle of Whiskies for those of you who um, kind of max out your peat or smoke on, on Johnny Black, you know? Um, what we do get here is a tremendous amount of um, sherry and raisiny kind of smells. Well, I'm jumping the shark a little. Let's get this thing to the nose. Yeah, uh, prominent sherry on the nose, um, raisiny kind of smell. Maybe some kind of dried orange or orange peel, something along those lines, perhaps even a dried prune sort of smell. Um, on that approach. This is um, really kind of a very morphy whiskey. You know, when I was doing the neck pours and the shoulder pours, um, the sherry was super pronounced on it. And it also had um, a drying, tannic feeling. Like it almost had, I mean, I know it's a 12 year old whiskey. So maybe it's silly to say it had too much contact with the wood and the barrels, but it did almost have a drying, puckering, tannic feel. Maybe it's just the barrel this bottle came from. Um, who knows, it is my first Bunahagen, so I don't have any frame of reference on that. Um, but now that we're down below the shoulders, this thing's really opening up. This whiskey is really opening up. It's, it's really softening. It's becoming more expressive. There's some fruit sweetness in there, a little bit of, you know, raisiny sweetness. The sherry is far more muted. It was actually a little overpowering on the neck pours. Not now. Uh, really very nice. On the neck pours and even down to the initial shoulder pours, I was adding water. Added water last night to a dram where I was already below the shoulder and I felt like I broke the whiskey. I feel like I over diluted it. I'm not going to add water tonight. I have my water standing by here, but I'm not going to add it. I feel like I would overly dilute. Sherry, almost a hint of like a, a sweet putty or caulking material. I know that's not a very flattering descriptor, but it, it's actually quite pleasant. Yep, more of the raisins, maybe even like some stewed dark fruit and um, some noticeable some noticeable citrus for sure um, on the finish without any bitterness um, really nice 
really nice. So anyways, folks, not the world's most astoundingly complex or fascinating whiskey, but an interesting whiskey, all the more so because of where it's from. You know, it, it, it just stands out as a non-peated, very enjoyable whiskey from Isla. Um, not a lot more to be said about it. Anyway, if you've watched this far, I appreciate it. I know this wasn't the smoothest review, but we're going to get a lot better because we're going to practice. <laughs> Thank you very much for your time. Stay well, stay happy, drink whiskey, love watches. Take care.